Eventually, and it may be hard to believe right now, the war between Israel and Hamas will end, at least this iteration of it. What will a detente look like, and will it involve a two-state solution? Hello and welcome to Roundtable. I'm Enda Brady. For decades, international proponents of a nation for Israelis and a separate one for Palestinians have said it's the only way to achieve a lasting peace. But following the violent escalation in Gaza in October, does the idea of a two-state solution still have a future? The United States continues to believe that the best viable path, indeed the only path, is through a two-state solution. With that wise solution, two states, the Oslo Accords, two well-defined states, and Jerusalem with a special status. I will call for the two-state solution and the recognition of the state of Palestine. The two-state solution would recognize two separate and sovereign nations, one for Israel and the other for Palestinians. But there are a number of issues. Many Israelis say they would not feel safe neighboring a militarized Palestinian state. The October 7th attack will do little to allay those fears. Many Palestinians, who would govern the West Bank and Gaza, want the pre-1967 so-called Green Line borders. Since then, Israel has built illegal settlements housing hundreds of thousands who now live in the occupied West Bank. Meanwhile, public support for the two states has eroded. In September, one poll found only 35% of Israelis thought two nations could coexist peacefully. Meanwhile, only 24% of Palestinians supported the idea. And then there's the problem of Jerusalem. The city is hugely significant to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. Successfully dividing it up is fraught. International attention and political will is focused on the Middle East seriously for the first time in decades. But will it mean an eventual step towards peace? Well, let's meet our guests. In Ramallah, we have Mustafa Barghouti, the Secretary General and co-founder of the Palestinian National Initiative. In Copenhagen, we have Professor Emmanuel Hassassian, Palestine Ambassador to Denmark and former Palestine Ambassador to the United Kingdom from 2005 to 2018. In Jerusalem, Hiba Hosseini, fellow at the International Dialogue Initiative and chairs the Legal Committee to Final Status Negotiations between the Palestinians and Israelis. And here in the studio with me is Dr. H. A. Hellier, non-resident scholar at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He also serves as a senior associate fellow at the Royal United Services Institute in London. I'll come to you first, sir. Where is the two-state solution right now? The two-state solution is not suspended. I think it's on ice and in the ice age. Uh, it becomes very difficult to consider the implementation of a two-state solution when you have not only an occupation, an occupation can end, but you have a consistent policy of building, expanding, and fortifying settlements in the West Bank, as well as, of course, in East Jerusalem. So I'm not sure what sort of contiguous entity would actually be possible given these circumstances. Of course, anything is possible. The Israelis could remove all of their settlements from the West Bank and East Jerusalem, but one does not see many indications that they're interested in doing so. It's the opposite, surely, isn't it? We see expansion, expansion, expansion. I think it's the opposite in multiple times over. Um, and unfortunately, this is something that seems to escape our discourse when people talk about the settlements, when people talk about the two-state solution, because they don't want to admit that actually a one-state reality is already in place, whether people like it or not, and it's not very pretty. Mustafa, if I can come to you, that phrase that our colleague here has just used, on ice, I mean, what would your reading be? On ice, stroke, long-term, I thought it was dead. Actually, I wrote an article in The Guardian on the 15th of May where I said that uh, Israel killed the two-state solution. 
but you cannot just say that they killed it without identifying who exactly killed it, uh, killed it and how he did that. And that is not, in particular Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, and, and many of the people in his extreme Likud party, and all of the other extremists in Israel, including Smotrich and the others. Uh, but look here, there are three possibilities only for the solution to the, for the situation today. Because we don't only have occupation, we have occupation, we have apartheid, we, which is all uh, built on uh, an ethnic cleansing that co was committed in 1948. And now we have another act of ethnic cleansing, and an Israeli effort to evict basically all the Palestinians from Gaza Strip. And they will try to do the same in the West Bank by first trying to do ethnic cleansing in, in, in the Area C. So what we have is one apartheid reality today. And the only alternative to one apartheid reality is one democratic state reality. For Israel, this is not the solution. The solution is ethnic cleansing of all Palestinians. That's what Smotrich said today, the Israeli finance minister, when he called for evicting all Palestinians from Gaza into other countries. And that's what he's been saying all the time. We will fill the West Bank with settlers and settlements so that Palestinians will lose any hope of a state of their own. And then they will have one of three options, either to immigrate, which is ethnic cleansing, or accept a life of subjugation to Israelis, which is apartheid, or die, which is the genocide they are also conducting now in Gaza. The two-state solution can be revived only with one condition, the total and complete eviction of all illegal settlers from the West Bank. Without that, the whole idea of two-state solution has no viability, it will not happen, and it will be just a cliche that many Western governments use to cover up the fact that they are supporting the continuation of occupation or are silent, silent about the continuation of occupation and are silent and sometimes participant in consolidating apartheid in Palestine. Let's bring in Manuel. Look, you're a diplomat, you're a lifelong ambassador with serious experience. In your view, do you think the Israeli settlers would ever move out of the West Bank and take part in a two-state solution, with that being what they need to do? Well, let me start by saying first that 30 years ago, the idea of a two-state solution was a concrete idea to end this conflict and to end this occupation. However, what we have witnessed in the last 30 years is total procrastination of implementing the two-state solution, which is unfortunately was not implemented by the international community that shouldered since 1993 that the only game in town is the two-state solution. Now, if you look at the West Bank, basically, it's, 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 it's an island of archipelago. There is no geographic contiguity. It's like a Swiss cheese with 750,000 settlers and more than 240 settlements. It will be impossible to reverse the conditions and still talk about a two-state solution. Then the other options that we see from the Palestinian side is a one democratic secular state, let alone is still Israel continuing with ethnic cleansing, with uh, fortifying the apartheid system and uh, let alone the genocidal and heinous crimes committed against our people in Gaza is a total recipe for even thinking about a two-state solution. There is nothing on the ground that could be really comfortable for negotiating parties to talk about. And today, even the United States that at one time wanted to be an honest broker of peace did not really uh, stick to its guns, but unequivocally has been totally supporting the state of Israel and allowing the state of Israel to build more settlements, to expand more settlements, and to give them the green light for license to kill in Gaza. And this kind of genocide, which is a transfer of a whole population, 1.5 million have been transferred, yet alone they are waiting their destiny, whether to go to the sea or end up in the, in the Sinai desert, or God knows if they are going to be whacked by a nuclear bomb by Israel, this is yet to be perceived. But to talk about a two-state solu solution, now it's impossible because the dust has to settle down 
in the occupied territories. We have to see what the international community has to do to stop this onslaught, this, this heinous crime. We cannot even get a ceasefire for a couple of days or three days or what have you in order for people not to die from hunger and thirst let alone the constant bombing and shelling of F-16s by the Israelis at the site of the international community, and nothing is being really put any kind of pressure on Israel to stop its uh, carnage, its onslaught, its, its killing massively the Palestinian people while, while people are, are dying. And we don't know what is the number of casualties for Israel to stop this onslaught against what is so-called Hamas now, as a pretext for the annihilation of the Palestinians, the decimation entirely of a massive people, yet with no end result and no kind of end of this game. There is nothing that Israel is offered except continuous bombarding, and the international community, beyond sympathy and empathy, are not doing anything to stop this carnage. Manuel, I want to bring in Heber. Heba, do you think Netanyahu and his colleagues in this far-right Israeli government, has a decision been taken that they really want a one-state solution? Well, I'm not so sure about what they want, uh, except that they don't recognize that there are Palestinians that exist uh, in the West Bank, Gaza Strip and, and East Jerusalem. Uh, even as far as this morning, uh, uh, the Minister uh, of Finance, Mutrich, said that the Palestinians must voluntarily leave and go to the Arab states. That's where they belong. So I don't think they're ready or, or even have the seriousness to engage in, in any discussion on a two-state solution. Uh, uh, again, I agree with my colleagues, but let me say this. Uh, Oslo agreements and the Oslo agreements must be retired. They have overextended their application. And uh, whether it's one state or two states, I, I don't see uh, uh, Palestinians living in any democracy in a one state with Israeli policies the way they have been in, uh, applied over the last uh, 75 years. Uh, and we're not talking about the, the you know, just uh, the 1967. This started, the ethnic cleansing started in 1948. 750,000 Palestinians were transferred and evicted and displaced in 1948. So the, 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 the start of this conflict has roots so deep in the Nakba. And uh, Israel uh, continues in, in these policies. So unless Israel and Israeli leadership has a new direction, has new policies, ha accepts that there are Palestinians on, on this land, uh, I, I do not see that they can live in a one state or, or live in a two state uh, solution because they don't see the Palestinians as human beings, let alone negotiating with them. Let's remember also that this Israeli government under Prime Minister Netanyahu sidelined uh, uh, the PLO, its partner in peace, uh, said for the last 30 years they have no partner. Uh, they divided the West Bank into cantons, isolated East Jerusalem, uh, encouraged uh, settlers, extreme settlers, to go to the Haram al-Sharif. Uh, and, and, of course, and what, what we are witnessing today in Gaza with, with the ethnic cleansing, the, 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 the war crimes, Israel does not recognize international law. Israel does not want to see an end of occupation. They want to manage the conflict. They want a policy of containment. All of this has, has not worked. So unless there is a serious decision, policy decision supported by genuine international political will, starting with the US and, and the EU and the UK, as supported by another genuine commitment by the Arab states to, to resolve this conflict once and for all and end this human suffering, I don't see a one state, I don't see a two state, I, I see a continued state of violence and conflict. At this point, we have to say goodbye to Dr. Hellier, who has to leave us for a meeting. I thank him for his time. Mustafa, I want to ask you, what would it do to an Israeli leader if they signed off on a peace deal with the Palestinian people for a two-state solution? 
Well, I know that uh, what you mean is that Israel is now drowning in extremism and uh, in uh, in uh, actually more than that. I, I would say what you have now is the kind of fascist leaders like Smotrich <clears throat> who don't even shy away from calling themselves fascist. Uh, but the reality, I think maybe the right question here is not whether we will have two state solution or one state solution. The question is, Shall the settler colonial project continue or not? With the settler colonial racist approach that Israel is adopting, there will be no solution whatsoever. And I do not expect the United States or United Kingdom or any other party in the world to come and solve the problem. This is a struggle that Palestinians are conducting to achieve their freedom, self-determination and dignity. And they will have to continue the struggle to achieve their goal of freedom and self-determination. Nobody will help us unless we help ourselves. And uh, that's what many Palestinians understand today, that we have to rely on ourselves. And what's happening now in Gaza, and the fact uh, that many countries in the world are turning their back to Palestinians and not even calling for a ceasefire, just the simple ceasefire, uh, that, that is another message, uh, major, another strong message to Palestinians that we have to be self-reliant, self-organized, and struggle for our rights. But at the end of the day, there will be no solution without ending the, the, the settler colonial approach. Without ending that, we cannot have neither one state or two states. But eventually we will get there because racism cannot be continued. Uh, oppression cannot be continued. It's not sustainable. Manuel. The, the, the Israeli thinking that they can really continue to control Palestinian lives in this manner as they are doing now is just uncomprehensible. Manuel, I want to ask you, how do you feel about what the Israeli finance minister has said then, Smodrich telling people, Palestinian people, that they need to go to Arab countries? Well, actually, Smodrich is portraying the ugly image of Israel and its occupational policies. We have uh, uh, witnessed what they have been doing on the ground uh, for the last 75 years, let alone that 13 years with Prime Minister Netanyahu being in power, the idea of negotiations and the two-state solution is a dead idea. And we have seen Netanyahu incrementally has buried the two-state solution. So there is no uh, reason why we should talk about a two-state solution. We can only talk about two-state solution when, occupy or when occupation ends. When this colonial project will totally be halted and terminated by the international communities will let alone the United States, should stop from its unequivocal support to the state of Israel since its creation. And pretending that it has been an honest broker of peace, we have seen nothing except calamities and disastrous policies that eventually changed the facts on the ground and created a monstrous, what we call land grab by, by the Israeli settlers, where, as I said earlier, it will be impossible to reverse the to make these conditions reversible in order to initiate a kind of discussion. For, for Netanyahu, he is willing to negotiate peace for peace, but not for relinquishing the, the, the occupied territories. So many UN resolutions have been, you know, <laughs> drafted and, and uh, resolutions came, but we didn't see any resolute action from the international community to implement it. We have seen the shy and apologetic attitude of the Western countries, especially Europe, that has been nothing except a dovetail to that of the United States, without doing anything, without implementing any international law on the ground. We have seen that Israel, with impunity, has been defying the international law, the international humanitarian law, all kinds of resolutions that were pro in favor of Palestine in gaining its self-determination and in creating its independence has been gone in phase. So when we talk about a two-state solution today, it's talking about a mirage. It's, it's, it's seeking water in a desert that has no oil, that has no water wells. So today the position is very clear. We have seen all the masks have fallen, the fig leaves have fallen, the, the empathy and the sympathy of Western countries has fallen into non concrete actions on the ground, and they are giving the license to kill for Israel to the Palestinians. And, you know, 
uh, they're going with the idea of let's finish this Palestinian problem. The only way to do it is genocide and population transfer and extreme bombing and killing civilians and children and women and elderly until the Palestinians give up. And as Dr. Mustafa said, let alone Heba, Israel does not pay any heed to any international law or humanitarian law. And as long as the veto power is being used in the UN Security Council by the United States of America, nothing is going to be done except we watch on television the extermination, the decimation of a nation that is out crying for help, that are dying now, not only from uh, uh, lack of uh, electricity or fuel or whatever, now they're dying from hunger, from food, from water, from medication, let alone the bombardment that we are seeing is unprecedented in modern history. Manuel, Most I want to bring Hebe in. ...that this universe has ever seen in their lives. Hebe, who could work as an honest broker here from the international community? Who would you like to see get involved and work as an honest broker? Well... Uh, I don't think there's one honest, single honest broker. I, I think there has to be uh, a, a, an international will uh, to uh, change the dynamics completely. Uh, it's not about honesty as much as it is accepting that the Palestinians have the right to, to self-determination and the right to be on this land, just like Israel does have a right to be on this land, according to international law. Uh, we cannot continue. I mean, we had the first intifada. We had the second intifada. We, are, we had se several wars on Gaza. And, and now this catastrophe, a second catastrophe of, of humongous proportions on, 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 on human life and, and, and the quality of life, of course, which is non-existent in Gaza. So it's not about simply a question of who is honest and who is dishonest. It's a question of applying the same standards that created the state of Israel in 1948 to create the Palestinian state and to recognize it. We are on the ground. We are created already, actually, and, and we need the recognition. Let's start with recognition and let's move forward. Otherwise, this we will be will continue to be occupied. The occupation is not going to end. The conflict is not going to end without a, a genuine approach to, to, to ending this conflict and to ending this, uh, this, this occupation. So it is not one single, it's international collective will. The collective will that supported Israel in this war on Gaza has to exist in the same kind of collective will to, to engage in, in ending the occupation and recognize once and for all and say, yes, the Palestinians have a right to statehood, a recognized state. Look, what, you know, what, when, when Sweden recognized the state of Palestine, what happened to Sweden? It was shunned by the inter international community among its also uh, EU, fellow EU countries. Israel withdrew its ambassador. I mean, what statement is this sending to the world and to the Palestinians when, when a state uh, like Sweden recognizes the, the state of Palestine and is shunned? So we need to change the entire thinking, the entire approach, and agree that this conflict must end today. Heba, not, just not on, the point of, on the point end of ending conflicts, you can probably tell from my accent I'm Irish, there is huge support in Ireland for the Palestinian people and the Palestinian cause. Now, for decades in Ireland, we had violence. We had extreme violence. We had bloodshed. We had loss. And for so many families, it was horrible to live through. And for decades, we never thought there would be peace. And yet, we have ended up with a peace for 25 years that still exists. Mustafa, my final question to you. Is there anything to be learned from what has happened in Ireland? Yes. Uh, what should be learned is that uh, even when people are resisting and struggling for their rights, they should not be considered inhuman. And that the key point to ending this situation and ending this uh, clash between us and the Israelis, if you can call it clash, the only way out of this situation is to accept Palestinians as equal human beings. 
and not to negate Palestinian history or Palestinian rights or Palestinian self-determination. Uh, what we have seen so far is that one side is, uh, uh, is overcoming the other, uh, using the power they have, the military power, the financial power, the political power, the support of the United States, and so on, to liquidate the Palestinian issue. And that will not be allowed. I think as much as people in Ireland had to learn to accept each other, this is the main question here. But we Palestinians have accepted the Israelis. The, the PLO recognized Israel. Israel in return did not recognize Palestine as a state. All they recognized is PLO as a representative of Palestinians. So the time has to come when the Israelis will accept us as equal human beings. That's the entry point to any solution and not to call Palestinians human animals, as the defense minister of Israel did. If they accept us as equal human beings, if they accept our rights as the rights they want for themselves, then we can have a solution. Otherwise, we will not stop struggling. One thing they should understand very well is that we, the Palestinians, will never, ever accept to be slaves of a system of apartheid or occupation or oppression and we will never accept the ethnic cleansing of our people from our land. Mustafa, Manuel and Heba, thank you all so much for your input. Remember, you can see more discussion and debate on our YouTube channel. Search for Roundtable TRT World. But for now, from me and the Brady and all of the team here, goodbye and thank you for watching.